Hey everyone, Joe here from Mars Talk. So for well over two years now, our society has been struggling to overcome the global pandemic, COVID-19. This virus took three months to spread around our planet with devastating results. Entire industries and everyday lives suddenly came to a standstill as we struggled to gain control over its spread. From quarantining to face masks, to limiting the number of people at gatherings, we've tried our best to limit exposure to the virus. You're probably watching this video right now from the comfort of your home. The home you've been pretending, like me, is a simulation Mars base, and if you go outside without protective gear, you're gonna have a really bad day. I mean, we've tried practically everything but running away to Mars. But would that work? Running away from COVID-19 by hitching a ride to another planet? Would COVID-19 even survive the trip out there? The question that got us thinking was this. Will future Martians ever get sick? Let's find out. Now, in order to answer this question, we'll need to look at a few factors. One, what do we mean by get sick? That's a pretty broad term that can apply to a lot of different conditions. Since we were initially inspired to do this video because of COVID, we will limit our scope to contagious respiratory illnesses, which include such diseases as measles, whooping cough, the common flu, and yeah, COVID-19. Uh, two, are there any historical analogies from which we can draw connections? Three, how does space change us physiologically speaking? Four, what measurements do we currently take to prevent astronauts from getting sick? And lastly, what about the trip out to Mars or a Mars settlement would help or hinder the health of those making the trip? Okay, so now that we know exactly what we want to investigate, let's wind the clock back to our first historical analogy. The year is 1607, and there's a brand new bump in settlement in Virginia, creatively called Jamestown, after King James I. After months at sea, about 100 settlers had established a small fort as their colony. Not long after their captain left for resupplies, many of them began dying due to a variety of diseases, mainly through drinking nearby stagnant water. It's said that about half of these early colonists died in the first year, and without the help of local Native Americans, the colony would have completely failed. Okay. Now let's fast forward the clock three and a half centuries to October 1968. That's when Apollo 7 launched three astronauts into space to test crew performance in the command and service module. Only 15 hours into the launch though, astronaut Walter Shearer Jr. came down with a cold. He then passed this cold to his other crew members, who spent the next 10 days sick inside the module. Apparently, everyone on board struggled to perform their tasks and were reported to be extra cranky when speaking to ground control, going so far as to unplug one of the television broadcasts. The same situation then happened to not only the next mission, Apollo 8, but also the one after that, Apollo 9. It was at this point that NASA decided to implement a new pre-flight quarantine that limited the contact astronauts had prior to their launch. Now, Mars colonists won't have the help of indigenous people, nor will they have an abundance of resources waiting for them on Mars. And instead of returning to Earth 10 days later, they'll either be well into a six month journey out to Mars or on Mars. So with so few case studies from which to draw, what do space agencies currently do when an astronaut gets sick? Initially, NASA would simply monitor who astronauts had contact with prior to their launch and then quarantine them in a mobile quarantine facility, or MQF, after they came back from space, mostly because they were afraid of contamination from moon bugs. This all changed after Apollo 14, when lunar samples that were collected were not found to have any biological activity whatsoever. During the shuttle days, astronauts would get what was referred to as an L10 physical exam, which was basically an in-depth exam 10 days prior to the launch. Astronauts were placed in a limited quarantine and then given another exam two days prior to launch in what was called, you guessed it, the L2 physical exam. Nowadays, major space agencies all have similar pre-flight safety precautions, now called health stabilization. 
Astronauts are placed in a two-week quarantine with very limited interaction, and even then only with personnel approved by the flight surgeon. This person is assigned to the health and well-being of astronauts, not only prior to their launch, but also during and after their missions. They assist crew medical officers in space, if need be, with medical advice. What we currently do with all the astronauts is that they go into quarantine before they are launched to the ISS um, for several reasons. First of all, we of course don't want the crew member to be sick on launch day. Um, that's not a very uh, pleasant thing uh, for uh, when you're suited up and uh, strapped in um, and ready um, to be uh, rocketed into space. Um, so first of all, we want the crew to be be as healthy and so that they can perform optimally uh, during launch and during their first uh, days, weeks in space. We don't want them to be sick. They don't want to be sick. So that's, of course, one of the reasons. Another reason is we don't want the crew that is already on the ISS to catch uh, a virus, uh, for example, uh, from the new crew arriving uh, because Obviously, uh, uh, we don't want them to get sick either, and uh, they want to perform optimally. So we really try to uh, reduce the risk of tr transmission of any uh, um, pathogens into uh, uh, the ISS. And of course, we will also do the same thing for lunar or Mars missions. We will send up a healthy crew that's gone through a quarantine, um, so that we know that if they had any anything with the, on them, that that is taken care of before the flight. So how does space change the way we get sick, and why is it any different from getting sick here on Earth? Well, it mostly comes down to gravity. You see, we and every other living thing have adapted to life with gravity. Turns out, once you take that away or alter it, things start to change, mostly for the worse. We're still trying to figure out exactly what changes in our bodies and how. But we do know that basically, immunity goes down and virulence goes up. All in all, it seems like it's easier for viruses to transmit in space. First, there's the stress that the human body goes through during this transition to microgravity. Then, the lack of gravity to pull down contagious particles in the air makes it easier for viruses to spread. Fortunately, a lot of work has been done to mitigate the potential of getting sick. Astronauts maintain good hygiene and healthy lifestyles in space, including working out for a couple hours every day. Additionally, the US section of the ISS has extreme air filters, also called high-efficiency particulate air filters, to ventilate the air and remove anything hazardous. So what does all this mean for future missions to Mars? Well, we can actually use two analogies that are right here. The first we've already discussed, the ISS, which can be used as a starting point for the conditions future astronauts will be in on the trip out there. Now the second analogy we have here on Earth can be used to discuss how a future colony will function during an outbreak of some kind, Antarctica. Okay, let's start with the trip out there. We already know that it's going to be a fairly confined space overall, even if you're traveling on the SpaceX Starship. You can bet that any mission out there will have some sort of medical doctor on board, with enough medicine and equipment to handle an array of basic ailments from congestion to heart failure. With medication, pre- and post-launch quarantining, and high-efficiency air filters, the question still remains, could an astronaut get sick on the way to Mars? To answer your question, they will get sick okay. if, you, if you were there long enough. Um, just because of the stuff we carry on our skin, the stuff we carry in the... Um, so you carry, for instance, tetanus kind of lives on your skin. Um, and so that's why it, um, so it can infect you just because it's there. Right. And if you removed all of that bacteria before you left, then that person's not healthy either. Um, because it, it does, it does things. That's how you digest your food. That's how you do all that kind of stuff. I think that's just the, the, I think, and I don't hundred percent certainly know, but that would be the assumption I would make in planning a system is that a illness that is infectious, eventually everyone's gonna get it. 
So essentially, when it comes to bringing a contagious pathogen with us on the trip out there, there's a chance that that could happen. But the trip to Mars as it currently stands is at least six months. It's a long time, especially for a pathogen. Stuff like bacteria and viruses need a hospitable environment to successfully spread. So with the intense environment of a spaceship and the human body fighting it off in a few weeks, that leads us back to our original question. Will future Martians ever get sick? It, it, it depends. The answer to everything is it depends. But you likely are going to be immune to it if you all got it and recovered from it. Okay. You could get it again, but then your body knows how to fight it off. The operating assumption for viral stuff is that it, if you're not going to get the same one again. However, in this higher radiation environment, the virus could change enough yeah. due to mutations that you no longer keep the immunity to that virus. And so then you can get it again in a, in a slightly modified form. And so again, those are unknowns. And so that there's no sense that you wouldn't, that it just it depends how big, if you only have four people, that's likely not going to happen. If you have a hundred people, that is certainly a big enough group that something can make it around. And if it's mutating all the time, then you get it again and again and again. So that, that would be a, a so if you, but if you, if you have, if people are quarantined throughout the mission in their little groups and no one's getting sick, you can feel reasonably sure that nothing of that type would make it onto your colony. It's worth noting that a virus is much less likely to survive the six month journey out there than a bacterium would. This is due to the fact that viruses have a tough time surviving outside of a host. So even if you had COVID-19 after launching from Earth, there's a very slim chance that it could make it all the way to Mars. The CDC has also found that people who have recovered from COVID-19 can continue to shed detectable COVID-19 RNA up to three months after infection. However, infectiousness is unlikely at the levels detected. This, combined with the knowledge that coronavirus itself only lasts at most a few days on a surface, means that there is a very low chance of COVID-19 hitching a ride with us to the red planet. But there's still the potential for a bacterial infection, such as strep throat. So what would that look like in a future Martian colony? Well, we already know that antibiotics are likely going to be less effective. Treatment will depend on how quickly infection can be detected so as not to overwhelm whatever medical facility is on the ground. So, um, yes, they will get sick, especially if they're long enough. And also they'll get normal occupation. It's, it's an industrial environment, right? So they get sick on in like, so if that for that kind of question, the closest analogy would be Antarctica, right? They get sick out there. The closest we come to those conditions here on Earth would be the remote Emmonson Scott Research Station in Antarctica. Conditions here are bleak and frigid, with low temperatures around minus 80. And although the nearest help isn't 140 million miles away like it would be on Mars, it is still very difficult to evacuate anyone in case of a medical emergency. In these situations, there are often one or two medical professionals to help a facility of almost 200 people. Oftentimes, other residents are trained as volunteers to take over from professional medics after the worst conditions have been treated. As a Mars settlement is starting out, it's likely that most everyone will be cross-trained in multiple disciplines, including medicine. As to when some sort of bacterial infection arises, well, that's going to depend on the severity of the illness itself. In all likelihood, the protocol will include some sort of antibiotic treatment coupled with self-isolation to prevent any spread. Fortunately, with most bacterial infections, you are symptomatic when you begin to display symptoms. So there's less sneaking around like you'd have with viral infections that can still be contagious while the person is asymptomatic. So to answer the question, will future Martian colonists ever catch a cold? The answer is, it's unlikely. And that really long six month journey out there? Well, that could actually be one of the best ways of keeping a future Martian colony as healthy as possible. Because in all of our research, some of the best ways of preventing the spread of disease are quarantining and wearing a mask. So we'll leave you with this. Stay healthy, stay safe, and above all, stay curious.